This year marks the 100th birth anniversary of the cinema master and renaissance man Satyajit Ray. To mark the anniversary, my entire report has chosen just one film, and that too a made-for-television short film, the 1981 Hindi title Sadgati, that Ray directed for India's Doodarshan Television. To tighten the focus, MCR speaks to one of the two protagonists of the 45-minute long film, the celebrated film and stage actor, Dr. Mohan Agashe. Dr. Agashe, who is a psychiatrist by qualification and practice, is a widely respected Marathi theater and stage actor. He played the role of the village priest Pandit Ghasiram in Sadgati, based on the short story of the same name written by Munshi Premchand, one of India's greatest writers. When Premchand wrote Sadgati in 1931, Ray was barely 10 years old. 50 years later, he made it into a short film at age 60. Here is Dr. Mohan Agashe reminiscing his memorable association with one of the world's greatest filmmakers. Uh, your introduction to Mr. Ray was via the iconic Marathi play Ghashiram Kotwal. Before I come to the remarkable story uh, about the Ghasiram connection and uh, with Mr. Ray, why don't you tell us how you persuaded him to watch a performance of the play in Calcutta? <laughs> and by the way, I've just sent you. I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. See, in 1978, and it's a remarkable the whole history of my group and me going to Calcutta for plays. Remarkable because both times we met with such severe disasters, natural disasters. One mm -hmm. natural, other man-made. Okay. Because our first performance was in September 1978. And the group was invited by Max Muller Bhavan because we had done a play, Bertolt Break, Three Penny Opera, but in our own way, with Bombay as a local. Mm -hmm. So it was more inspired by Beggar's Opera and based. And like Ajitesh Banerjee called his play Teen Posher Pala, mm -hmm. ours was Teen Paisa Sa Tamasha. Tamasha and the distribution was very clear. One penny for song, one penny for dance, and third penny for corruption. <laughs> anyway. So a group of 60 was invited and obviously the Maharashtra Association in Kolkata was very keen to see Gashiram. So we, we could easily accommodate in the team of 60 all the artists of Gashiram because they were also part of Three Penny Opera. Right. And so we went and uh, I realized after reaching that, that performance so fully booked and not a single ticket. Oh, and see. our intention of going to Kolkata was not only to cater to Marathi speaking, but we wanted all theater people to come and see. Because Shambhuda had seen it in Pune. Mm -hmm. and so with the help of Mr. Raju Raman, we managed to organize additional show in three days. Okay. Because we did not even have two seats for Manikda when I wanted to invite him. So I decided to have extra performance. <laughs> <laughs> so we managed Vidya Mandir we got. Shambhuda gave us a letter with a messenger to all theatre groups that if you miss this, you don't know what you are missing. Show was full. And when to Manikda, Manikda refused to come. He said, sorry, I've heard a great deal about it. But when I'm working on my own film, I'm working on the music. So I generally don't go out and don't do anything. So I couldn't say anything. When Jabbar arrived, we went together again. Then Jabbar said that, why don't you, uh, we, we pleaded him that we have come all the way. Not only. And if you don't come, it will be a disaster for us. <laughs> so you come for five minutes, we don't mind. And you go, we won't ask you questions on everything. So with great difficulty and because Tendulkar name, he agreed to come. And so he came and forget about 10 minutes. 
he stayed through the entire performance and another one hour spending time with the artist local artist and then volunteer and gave me a special coat for our american tour in 86 I to, yeah, that's that's a great segue for me because I was my next question was about that coat, the blurb that he gave you for your US tour. Do you remember what he said? Uh, gosh, in fact, I have it here. But he said, Kashiram is a treat, visual treat, musical treat, and content treat. The, I say that's so, amazing. Yeah, don't miss it. So I had three coats. Uh -huh. from three top people and I hope I'll find you and send you that poster Peter okay. Brook uh, Manik Das Satyajit Dari and um, Sir Richard Attenborough Wow, that's, that's quite a galaxy <laughs> because <laughs> Attenborough saw the performance in London Okay. Peter Brook saw it also in London Manik the Soyt in Kolkata. <laughs> well, yeah, well you, you certainly hit a big time. <laughs> right. And uh, then, then nothing happened. We came back. The white trip was memorable because on the last day, our last performance, it rained so heavy in Kolkata that all transport collapsed. I For next 15 days, there were no trains. And the group was stuck in Kolkata overnight 15 days finally we had to fly the group to Nagpur right. so it was a major disaster but that's another story right. so, and the last performance in Kolkata was 6th December 92 at the Academy of Fine Arts for Nandikar right. and they were just waiting for performance to be over we had scheduled extra performance because again the same performance sold out. So, and after the show, Rudro announced, we are sorry, but from tomorrow there is a three all party curfew because Babri Masjid has been. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. So both my trips to Calcutta with Kashira, we got <laughs> <laughs> financially we top very yeah. bad. You know. Dr. Agashi, there is a remarkable story that you tell about uh, Munshi Premchand's story, Sadgati, and one of the two protagonists being named Pandit Ghasira. And uh, uh, Mr. Ray having watched Ghasira Kotwal, and something perhaps triggered in his mind when he saw you I on stage. So. So. Why didn't you tell me about that? That's it, because something funny had happened. He always made Bengali films and I was no connect. My first real contact was when he came to Hashira, right. 78. And um, when he made uh, Shatranj Ke Khiladi, Shama Zaidi, who knew me because she had worked with Sham Benegal, right. or Nishant and Manthan, and I was a part of both. Absolutely. Yeah. And there was two small roles which were played by Farooq Sheikh and Shabana. So Shama wanted to suggest my name to Manikda for that role. But even before Shama arrived on the scene, Manikda had done the casting. <laughs> okay. So I missed that opportunity. Yeah. And then suddenly in 1981, when I was in the hospital for acute cervical problem, radiculitis, yeah. I get a letter from Manikda, one simple letter. I can send you a copy of that on the email. Sure. Which is so amazing because he personally typed it, mm. asking me that I believe that you are not well in the hospital, but I hope you have recovered by now. And I'm making one telefilm, short film, and I wanted if you could play one of the two leads in that is for Indian television, the first telefilm. Right. Based on Munshi Premchand's uh, story, uh, Shodgati. 
without wasting time, I promptly replied to him that no, no, my recovery was very fast. Actually, I had not really recovered. Okay. <laughs> and uh, of course, there is no doubt I will do that. 10 days and any 10 days you tell me. Right. Then he wrote me another type letter, being very happy with it, explaining that he may not be able to pay me much, which I didn't expect in any case. I said, people would pay you to cast it. <laughs> I'm getting casted without it. And um, uh, we, so he said, you'll get the script. Everything. Right. And now what is the clunky? What I noticed, and I don't know whether people notice it. After the formality was over, mm -hmm. he was very formal by typing. And, and my the last line of his second letter was, Greetings by one cervical collar man to another. Cervical collar. <laughs> and to inform me that he has sent me the script and also the ticket, the railway ticket came by registered parcel to my house. <laughs> wow. And that letter was handwritten. I see. Now, as a psychiatrist, this is very significant for me. Right. I was about to ask you that. That the formal part of our relationship was over. Exactly. And he didn't mind writing a letter to me. I have cherished that letter. It's with me. Right. That's all the content. We did the film. So that's quite a story. Yeah. yeah right. When I look back at it, and even when I decide to act a small role, I happen to get 25 page contract. Right. Which is our American legacy. It is. The transition from when we worked with trust, care and compassion. Now we work with utter distrust as if somebody is going to sue you. Exactly. So all clauses are there. I refuse to sign those contracts. I said, look, you must send a contract which I understand, right. not the lawyer. True. Or make a contract with the lawyer. Yeah. And I give you an example of Manegda. I mean, there is nothing beyond him, right? Exactly. I said, if this man can write a letter like this and this is enough for us to work together, why do you need this? That's true. That's true. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Agashe, it's just as well that you did not do Shatranj Ke Khiladi, which is one of my favorite films, because you ended up having a major role in his next film. Like you said, one of the two leads. The focus is between you and Mr. Puri throughout. I've watched it several times. Yeah. Uh, I, I want you to, if you, if you don't mind reminiscing, uh, what was the first day? I, I remember you had talked about the fact that when you reached Raipur by train, uh, Howrah Express, I think. Yes. Uh, there oh, was yes. a tall head bobbing up and down in that. Uh, Absolutely. Please tell me about that. Know. <laughs> it was funny. The ticket went to home also. Okay. And the train was from Mumbai. So from Pune, I went to Mumbai. I made home. I knew home. We were French. We boarded the train. It was first class AC compartment. And uh, as we approached Raipur, both of us realized that we know Manikda. Manikda knows us. But we don't know anybody else in his unit. True. So if the production person will come to fetch us, we will not be able to recognize him. But apparently, he would be able to recognize us. Yeah. Because almost pretty known, even the. Right. So, why don't we stand in the door <laughs> as the train slows down? In the, so, the, he would be able to see us. And then we'll see the man walking towards our compartment and we'll look. As the train enters, these platforms in India, they're full of people. They won't even let you get down from the train. So, and we kept on where to look. Right. And as the train passed, what we see is the one head popping out. <laughs> <laughs> and 
when didn't even have to work on the wind with this one manek da so we look at manek da himself is there don't worry so he go back <laughs> that's that's amazing so obviously the train stopped we came he, of course there were people with him who took our luggage and everything manek da said quickly bus and we asked manek da why you had to come so we would have come to the Oh, he said, well, "How can I ask such a question?" I mean, he didn't say that, right? But he had that face. <laughs> I see. <laughs> well, of course, I mean, you are my actors. <laughs> I see. Okay. <laughs> my God, voice! He said, and we arrived at the hotel. But the first thing he said, "No, before we have dinner, and you put your luggage in the room, but come to my room." Okay. Because I've done some sketches, and I want to decide on your look. And so we went to his room. He looked at me because I was doing Nana even then that right. time. Right, this moustache. Okay. <laughs> and the moustache has a funny story. Normally, when you do a play, because to avoid time makeuping and everything, I had grown the moustache for Nana for the Venice. Right. <laughs> and I said I'll remove it after the play in two year, two uh, years or so, whatever. And I couldn't remove the moustache for twenty years. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> they went on. So I had that mustache. So he looked at it. The bald, bald. He said, "Fine, you should be as you are. Don't worry. No makeup, nothing at all." So I said, "No." So he did quickly my sketch, everything. Right. Also, the sketch of Om, and of course, Om had to be Dukhi, Jama. Uh, yeah. So little oil here. Of course, Om was casted for that. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and so, and uh, then he—that's the first time I saw his kata. I see. You know the Bengali word kata, yeah. that yeah. red book, famous right. red book of Manila. Yeah, yeah I, I do. Out of curiosity, when I went through it, what I see is Manekta had written the script in his own handwriting. Four or five times. One according to the characters. One according to day and night scenes. Third according to locations. How many locations? Is location me kitne si ne? Us location me kitne? Wo kya karna? Fourth, the list was property. You know. Well, I was amazed. How methodical, systematic, scheduling with no computers? Yeah, amazing thing. Right, right. And if you didn't want to display any smartness, that man, actually, you did not need to ask any question. True, because everything was in red khata, uh -huh. and that khata was. Always on a small table near the camera. We don't shoot. Right. So whether he or Punuba or the Bansi, anybody wanted to refer, they had it right there. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Agashi, I, I also remember you had talked about the fact that the next day you showed up at seven o'clock in the morning for the first day of shoot. Uh, what's your memory of the set of the great Satyajit Ray? He's a very, he was a very patrician figure, very tall, extremely well spoken, rather clipped in his uh, uh, British English, and very structured sentences. The way he structured his shots, or the way he wrote his uh, script, I think even the way he spoke was very structured. What, what are your first memories of day one on that movie set? You know, we had come to shooting with Bodhi, hmm. who was not tall at all. <laughs> <laughs> she was, I think, hardly five feet something. <laughs> okay. uh, and it was a modest hotel. It was not a five-star hotel. Right. Just clean rooms, clean toilets. That's all. That's where we always stay. Very good. And uh, there was reception is. Not a big lounge or something, but about one sofa set and couple of chairs. Hmm. 
and uh, Sim, he had given us room. A room was shared by me and O. Right. So we were like a good Sardar, up pehle, up pehle. <laughs> <laughs> Getting ready, we were a bit delayed. Okay. okay. So we came down, it was not much delayed. Instead of seven, or seven ten or seven five or some seven seven, something like that. Right. <laughs> and we were casual thinking that it's not late by India. So as we came down the staircase on the first floor, there was this sofa where Bodhi and Manega was sitting with this uh, file and everything. The moment he noticed us climbing down, he didn't do anything, he didn't say anything. He just looked at his watch, which we noticed, both of us. <laughs> Smiled and said, shall we go? <laughs> so he said, of course. <laughs> it was a subtle reprimand. <laughs> yes, so we quickly jumped <laughs> to the car and um, Om said, oh, sorry, can, can, I, can you give me a minute? I'm, my script is in the room. I see. Yeah. So I told him, Om, don't worry, I have the script. So my director said, no, no, you go and get your script. <laughs> uh, now, you mentioned uh, storyboarding being an essential part of uh, Mr. Ray's filmmaking style. Uh, you must have been exposed to this, this story. story is not, this story is not complete. Oh, I said, oh, sir. Because this, everything should be the next day. We both decided that, look, we have noticed that he had a look at the watch. So, <laughs> so next day we went before seven o'clock and mm -hmm. sat exactly on the same sofa. <laughs> and as he was climbing down with Bodhi, he saw us. And he became serious, looked at his watch and he said, oh, am I late? <laughs> <laughs> and we smiled and said, no, Manikna, we are early. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so good. Okay. So now, I was talking about the storyboarding of Sadgati. Uh, storyboarding was such an important part of his filmmaking. Absolutely. absolutely. Uh, do, you, do you remember? Uh, uh, whether the storyboard of Sadgati translated the way it was on paper to the way it turned out to be on on screen? Well, he was very particular about it because he had every frame. So we didn't need to ask or anything. And it, it, it was no haste, no tension. Hmm. Tension be. Uh, Manikda, when he wanted, if somebody made a mistake, including us, but he never said a word to an, his actor. I see. Huh. That's wonderful. That's remarkable. He, he always had a one. His wonderful assistant called Punuga. Anything <laughs> <laughs> went wrong, he was like, Puno! Puno! <laughs> <laughs> So poor Puna had to take the brunt. Okay. And if he just said, Manu, you did it? No, no, you're fine. You're good, good, good. You do that. <laughs> so not, not even once. He said, oh, why didn't you do that? Why didn't you do Nothing, nothing at all. He knew how to, how to handle actors. Right. right. Particularly till you know each other so well that you don't mind saying I am one. Probably he did that to Shaumitra. I don't know. Shaumitra was with him for a long time. Or mm -hmm. uh, Rinku, Sharmila, maybe. Or Madhavi also. I don't know. Right. And that is the title of my thing was The Elephant and the Blind Man. There you go. Yeah, I was coming to that. Yeah, right. <clears throat> so never that. But one thing I clearly Remember, because the man who was so meticulous, who was making a 52-minute television film after having made 
classics. Trilogy, Charulata and everything. If one had to observe as a third person, one would get a feeling this man is working on his first film. Wow. With such meticulous, such care, you know, totally in it, what it means. I see. <clears throat> Without any his proper planning, planning means 15 days schedule finished in 14 days. In spite of the fact, he had to completely change the ending. Mm -hmm. We're initiating right. summer. So he had this big Ravana with 10. Uh, and the whole idea was to shoot the climax in burning sun. Mm -hmm. The dead body. And as the nature would have it, suddenly the weather changed. Right. And day before it is cloudy. I suspected that rain may come, may not come. And we were shooting, <clears throat> we had gone in the morning and and like the nature changes like this. It started pouring cats and dogs. And my just stopped for about hardly about three, four minutes. I said, Pulo, let's change, let's do the climax. Oh, okay. And he himself getting completely drenched because he was operating camera. I see. Whole sequence from where Smita starts coming. Yeah. Sees the body, knocks on the door, the dialogue between him and he, me and he, my wife. That whole thing was done in pouring torrential rain. Right. We shall not plan at all. Yeah. And the other things could have been done in that weather. Like me dragging the body. Right. No torrential rain. But it is over and I'm dragging. Exactly. So the whole atmosphere. But during that scene, particularly Smita coming and dead body lying there in yeah. the rain, rain, that dead wood piece and so there see if you read Premchand's story it probably to less sensitive people it may not appear as violent right but when you see it is my gosh so how to use nature yeah to enhance without making it melodramatic. Exactly. Exactly. Convincing and everything. Yeah. Yes. What? Yeah, and, 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 and that was followed by you dragging the body. It, it's Absolutely. such a powerful visual. Absolutely. And then making uh, that nose and putting it in the leg. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a stunning scene. Through that chikal. Right. And that, another little detail I noticed was the way you picked up Mr. Puri's leg with a hook like tree branch. Yes. Because he is, he is untouchable in the movie. You wouldn't even touch his body. Yeah, exactly. Now, these are uh, such remarkable details. These are details. All details. He was so careful about all details. Right, right. I, I gave an example in my thesis also. <coughs> that why I I like to work with directors like him because I don't think I'm a great actor. <laughs> 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 but they can give a feeling to the others that I'm a great actor. <laughs> well, that's the way, the way they design the scene, design the shots. Yeah. And this example I have given 
that when I come back from the Chamarosti, right, and I don't want to face my wife. Hmm. I mean, any good husband will know in such situation he doesn't want to face wife, right? Because she'll keep on nagging, asking him difficult questions for which he has no satisfactory answers. Absolutely. <laughs> so. The scene was done in four or five shots. Okay. And I was thinking then now how to portray that I have visited the Vasti, but I suspect that nobody will come. And this is going to create a big problem because the body will still be there. Right. right. And how to get rid of the body. I myself have don't have answers. What am I going to tell her? True. So how to avoid her? Yeah. What acting I have to do <clears throat> without knowing what shots I'm going to do. <clears throat> so the first shot is I enter. That's a passage. Passage which leads to central square. It does, yeah. And in the central square, his wife is putting clothes for drying. That's the first shot. Yeah. So you see me walking in towards her to the central square where she is there. Of course, you have seen putting the gun. Right. And the moment I notice her, instead of coming to her, I decide to exit. Right. <clears throat> Ask me, turn left <laughs> and go to the other passage. <laughs> I see. So that was the first shot. Now, in such situations, your back has eyes. You know that she's not going to stay there. She's yeah. going to follow. <laughs> so, having sensed that, second shot, I enter the room. There is a charpai. I decide to lie down on it. You do, yes. I lie down. As I and as everybody expects, she enters in with her first question. And did you go? What Manikda asks me to do? Mohan, let her ask you a question, you don't answer. What you do is only put your hand on your eyes. Right. So do it like this. Avoiding gaze. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> what you right. do is otherwise you look here, there, but here in the film, since you're lying, that you can't. So just put your arm like you're tired. Okay. Right, right, right. So she asks a question. I put the arm and just say yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Now I, I, she, she's not satisfied with the answer. She's she not. Asks the next question. Third shot, Manitda asks me to turn my face towards wall. Right. You know, behind. <laughs> not yeah. So I totally avoid her. <laughs> it is. And on the fourth shot, she, when she still continues, mm -hmm. get a little irritated and tell her, let me think. <laughs> yeah. Now the way scene is shots are designed, I don't have to do anything. Exactly. Except for exactly. But it gives an impact. No, it's it's a it's an exceptional observation that you made. The way he has broken down these four movements. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's it's remarkable. You know, and it's, then, it's, yeah. The, then she comes when she starts at night. After that, then there's night and it's still pouring. You're right. You hear the sound. They're inside the house. So total uh, feeling of rain is still there. Yeah. And she keeps on worrying what will happen to the body now. And what if the police comes? Yeah. And he says, are you idiot? In this way, the why police will come here. <laughs> <laughs> but what to, and then the idea strikes to him that he has to remove that body. So with Irritation though he starts, which is sochina though. Right. Sochina though. 
एंड देन ही सन्डे गोज इन ट्रांस एंड से सोचने दो सोचने ही हेज ऑलरेडी फाउंड सोल्यूशन एंड नेक्स्ट शॉर्ट कम्स दैट नोज putting yeah, yeah you lifted with that little tree branch yeah. no, this, is, this is remarkable yeah. and imagine it's a short film for made for television okay. uh, i wanted to ask you another little uh, just last couple of questions i know you have other things uh, one is uh, there is a scene uh, early on where after having a particularly satisfying lunch one afternoon you walking uh, it's sort of a tracking shot you're walking towards your veranda where there is your cot little bed lying there i i noticed that as you're walking a burp is rising in your stomach because you yeah. had a great meal and the way you half stifle it and half let it come out now yeah. that detail is it your detail or mr ray's detail that's my detail i thought yeah. so that's no, that no. <laughs> no that was <laughs> there you go that was um, i must compliment you i noticed that yeah, i so if you can see rarely he gave instructions about how to act hmm. he would always let you do what you want and try to see whether it fits into his design right if it doesn't he wouldn't say why don't you do this and do that unless it's a behave like i had to put the hand and like that right but in terms of showing acting he would say ma can we do something different i say i say so he would leave it to your intelligence that's right he would get it right uh, and, yeah and and he, he knew the first i did the first shot of only that puja no right about which he had written in the letter that uh, dr agashi we had one shot where you are doing puja and there you have to have that uh, tabak mm-hmm. in one hand and then you are playing the kya uh, bolte ghanta ah the the bell the ghanta also, these, are, these are difficult if you are not used to it maybe you you love to practice that it's But a haunting sound in the movie it's a really haunting sound i remember it vividly so i do it i do, so i can see you oh yeah here yeah. yeah yeah right okay. so i have to do like that <laughs> like that yeah and with the other hand i have to do this right fortunately also coming maybe from a brahmin family <laughs> <laughs> i was a much and, and getting intrigued by this moments it's a play i already knew the how to do that so i was i was saved <laughs> i was very very happy that i could do that. so after that shot on that was the first shot actually when we started shooting oh i see okay. that was the first shot he took interesting yeah right yeah. away and then when i turned to him he was oh, fine fine no <laughs> <laughs> well you you done it all your life so you know that <laughs> <laughs> so that's what this was great fun <coughs> dr agashi last two questions one is uh, to in my book there hasn't been a greater visual master in of cinema in india before or since mr ray most indian filmmakers make what i think are radio plays with some visuals mr ray was the only one who understood the cinematic power of cinema someone acted like you how did you have to adapt to his visual style did, did were you thinking about it when you were acting in sadhgati i must tell you one thing she my uh, as i grew up hmm. from theater to cinema right i found it cinema so useful in secretary hmm. particularly understanding treating emotions and emotional disorders that and this is very important yeah i i picked up audio visual literacy hmm see when we have moved from oral tradition to written tradition 
and orators are replaced by writers. Hmm. True. Something major has happened, which we have realized in digital era. In this migration from oral to written, word has become an orphan. Hmm. Word has lost its image and sound. Interesting, yeah. Because in oral tradition, you are talking. So that's there is a face to it. Yeah. There is a sound to it, the way you speak, the way you pause. So you communicate much more than what communicated is through word. Exactly. The moment you come to reading, particularly those who do not have that kind of imagination which Manekda has, right. more than 65% people have average imagination. Hmm. That is why writers have to spend pages describing the day, the time of the day, people around, what is so in order to create that so many words have to be used. Right. But if along with the word you have image and sound, what takes about 10 pages can be done in 30 seconds. There you go, yeah. Right? It is, yeah. Well, funnily enough, you see. So it's like, you know, Chatra, a child loses his parents. Word lost its parents. Right. Till All India Radio came. Where that word found its sound. True. And when silent cinema came, the word found the father. Right. But they met after so many years separately that they did not have a single house to live. Right. It was so expensive. Yeah. So where the cinema was very expensive, something. Right. It's only in the digital era we have found an affordable house for the whole family. <laughs> right. Of sound image and word. Absolutely, absolutely. And the language of emotional communication from then till today is image and sound. Right. When you read a book, you need to be conscious and aware. So processing of word is done through the conscious brain. Hmm. That part of brain, which also gives you consciousness and awareness. Whereas processing of sound and image is done by subconscious Absolutely. part of the brain and they are larger parts. Right. They have to store so many. Words are very few. Exactly, yeah. Images are in millions. And so the sound. So when you see film, Hmm. At conscious level, you may analyze words, but this is called the passive information. And like you have good book and a bad book, good cinema or bad cinema, good cinema or like healthy food and junk food, to my mind, since cinema went primarily in the hands of business people and used only for entertainment, hmm they compromised with authenticity of information in order to make it entertaining. So True. passive information gave us stereotype images, stereotype sound and portrayal of women and everything same everywhere. So that is a junk food. Right. And it can be damaging to the mind. So the effects of this passive information can be worse than passive smoking. Right. Passive it's smoking damages only body. This damages your mind. Very few people have used with 
consciousness the images and sound in their script there you go was number 1 in that wonderful because he was primarily an illustrator right and it's and another ability he had which i forgot to mention in that okay after shoot i had to go to america my first trip to america in it and so i told manikda manikda i have to go to america you know they said no no we have to do the dubbing i said hmm. at that time this thing was not in the area but i said man no, no no you come you come to kolkata we went to that old studio indrapuri and he did my dubbing without image are you serious at time you know the dubbing was yeah. you put it in a loop so you have headphone you listen to your pilot track and dub matching uh, lip uh, sync right. lip yeah But since the edited copy was not ready he said don't worry about the image i will give you pilot track in your head you listen to it as many times as you want till you are satisfied and just repeat exactly oh in the same rhythm i will do the syncing wow see sadgati you don't even doubt no you don't i have mean, i wouldn't have no so far he is the only filmmaker who has dubbed me without image remember so his mastery right over technical skills was not only limited to images exactly because he wanted intonation the same because that what has to go with the images right right amazing here no this is exceptional uh, dr agash the way you have uh, reminisced i don't think it people know about these things at all uh, and i forgot to tell it this particular aspect in that uh, victoria yeah. memo I, i didn't hear that yeah yeah now so this is a great story now i know i've taken enough of your time uh, this has been an absolutely riveting conversation uh, with you i want to thank you very much for spending nearly an hour with me yeah, thank you thank you thank you uh, uh, my best to you for all your upcoming movies and uh, a stage performance some day if you are in chicago please let me know i would be thrilled to meet you in berlin and i will send you on whatsapp some links to my other short works and everything wonderful it it's a great pleasure and bhetu uh, ya nantar bhetu zarur thank you thank you all the best good night good night